It's another edition of the Trading Tips video newsletter, teaching you how to become a successful trader today. This video newsletter is brought to you by TradingTips.com. Welcome to this TradingTips.com video newsletter. In this episode, we'll examine a trading strategy for maximizing gains while minimizing risk. Say it can't be so? Well, it can when you let your winners run by using rolling stops. You really can have the best of both worlds. To see how, let's continue. There are four important elements to stock trading. One, determining the direction of the market. Two, selecting stocks. Three, establishing a trading strategy. And four, implementing and sticking to that trading strategy. Previous episodes of the TradingTips.com video newsletter have covered numbers one and two extensively. This episode will look at a particular trading strategy, letting your winners run by using rolling stops. Before we can understand what a rolling stop is, we have to be clear on what a regular stop loss is. Let's say you enter a stock at $10 and want to cap your losses at 8%. You could set what's known as a stop loss on your stock at $9.20. If the stock were to fall to $9.20 or less, your broker would automatically sell your shares at the best available price. On a stock that's heavily traded, this normally means you will sell at 920. If a stock is more thinly traded or especially volatile, you might end up getting less than 920 because there may be no buyers at 920 if the stock gaps down below your stop loss price. With Portfolio Crafter and Options Insider, we use firm stop losses. When a stock or option falls below our stop loss price, we sell, no exceptions. This is part of sticking to our trading strategy. Another important part of most trading strategies is knowing when to take profits. Knowing when to sell for a loss with a stop loss is only half the game. You have to sell for a profit if you're ever going to make a profit. But when do you sell? Normally, trading strategies use one or more price targets. At Portfolio Crafter, we set two price targets. A first one, at which we sell half our position and let the other half run. And a second, at which we close out the position. In the case of the short-term portfolio, we set the first target at roughly 8% and the second target at roughly 12%. In the case of the long-term portfolio, we use bigger targets of 12 and 17%. The advantage of having two targets is that you can take some profits off the table when you reach a certain threshold so that you don't end up having a position reversing on you and turning into a losing trade. Recently, we started using a modified version of rolling stops at Portfolio Crafter. We added the stock Paychex, ticker PAYX, to the short-term portfolio on September 6, buying at 25.75. Our first target, which does not appear here because it was reached on October 10, was 2781. This gave us an 8% gain. Our original stop loss was 2372, which would have capped losses at 7.9%. Now, if we hadn't adjusted the stop loss to 2575 and paychecks had fallen to 2372 after we sold half our position for a profit at 2781, we would have barely broken even. In fact, we would have lost money after transaction costs. So instead, once Paychex hit our first target, we raised our stop loss to $25.75. Now there are two possibilities for the second half of our position, having already sold our first half for an 8% gain. The stock could fall to $25.75, at which point we would sell the second half at no gain or loss, leaving us with a roughly 4% gain overall. Or Paychex could go on to hit our second target of $28.84, which would provide us a 12% profit on the second half of the position and an overall profit of about 10%. Seeing as how the stock most recently closed at 2828, not too far from that second target, that is the more likely of the two scenarios. But either way, decent profits have been locked in. More advanced rolling stops work like this. When entering a stock, you set a stop loss and a first target. For example, let's say our entry price is 5882 and our stop loss is 5411, capping losses at 8%. Then let's set our first target at 64.70, which will provide a 10% gain based on the entry price of 58.82. Now, until one of those prices is reached, either the stop loss or the first target, nothing changes. If the stock falls to the stop loss before hitting its first target, it is sold for a loss. But if it reaches its first target first, then half of the position is sold for a 10% gain. And a new stop loss is set based on the first target's price or the stock's closing price, whichever is higher. For instance, if the stock hit 64.70 and closed below that price, the new stop loss would be set at 59.52, which is 8% below 64.70. If the stock closed above 64.70, then the new stop loss would be based on that closing price minus 8%. Then each successive day, the stop loss would be changed based on the intraday high, so that you would never fall more than 8% from the highest point at which the stock had reached. Each successive day, the stop loss is raised, but never lowered, whenever the stock hits a new high. What's the second target? 
There is no second target. The stock will only be sold once it falls 8% from its highest point. Keep in mind 8% is just an example here. It could be any number you're comfortable with. On the next slide, let's see how this could work out. Here is a chart of Apple, ticker AAPL, from July 2009 through June 2010. In the example, let's pretend we set a limit buy order at $135 per share and we're looking for a 10% gain, so our first target is $148.50. We want to cap losses at 8%, so our stop loss will be $124.40. But instead of setting a second target, we're going to use a rolling stop. Here's what would have happened. If we placed the limit buy order at the start of July, it would have entered on July 8 as shown. On July 16, our first target is hit at $148, which gives us a 10% gain. We sell half of the position and let the other half ride. At this point, we are going to raise our stop loss to lock in profits. If the stock had closed above $148, we'd use that price. Since it didn't, we'll use $148 and set the new stop loss at $136.16. From then on, whenever Apple hits a new intraday high, we'd raise the stop loss accordingly, ensuring the stock never falls more than 8% from its highest point without us getting out and taking the rest of our profits. Well, the very next day, Apple reached the new intraday high of 152.02. So we adjust our stop loss on that basis up to 139.85. From there, Apple continued to hit new intraday highs over and over again. If we'd set a 15% second target or even a 20% second target, we would have ended up leaving a lot of profits on the table. Instead, we let this winner run. On April 23, 2010, Apple hit an intraday high of $272.18, whereby we set our new stop loss at $250.40. Before it ever went higher than $272.18, it next fell to $250.40 on May 5, when we sold the second half for an 85.2% gain. Is there a downside to using rolling stops? Yes. If, for example, your stock falls to its rolling stop, but then soars much higher, you would have sold too soon. But the system is a conservative way that you can both lock in profits and potentially get huge gains. We hope you've enjoyed this TradingTips.com video newsletter. Thanks for watching and good trading. This Trading Tips video newsletter has been brought to you by Manny Backus's First Hour Trading System. Every day there's money to be made in the first hour of stock trading. This is the world of day trading, not for novices, unless you have a system. The First Hour Trading System. Visit firsthourtrading.com now and sign up for a free 30-day trial. You could make enough in the first hour of your day to take the rest of the day off. View more Trading Tips videos. Visit tradingtips.com. Sign up for our free video newsletters and become a successful trader today.